We have now been joined by 22nd year head coach Fran O'Hanlon getting ready to start his season. He's got an easy opener as he'll take on Villanova on Friday night. They're just the national champions. Lafayette right now ranked number two in the nation and we'll see how that game goes. Fran, you've been through the recruiting process much like Teresa has been for many, many, many years. Uh, talk a little bit about what you look for in a player uh, to come here and play at Lafayette College. Well, number one, we have to look for good students. You know, that's uh, first and foremost. After that, you know, the way we play, we run a passing game. Um, you know, it takes a little bit more time. We're looking for basketball IQs, people that can mm -hmm. can uh, can see the game, uh, make plays. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Sometimes we don't always <laughs> find it, but we do look for it. Uh, but that's uh, that's probably the next thing. And and you know, obviously, character is, is huge in all this. But we always have pretty good character guys. Not to, get, not to get too much into the weeds, but I, 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 love, I love the phrase, uh, not see the court, see the game. What's right. the difference? Well, see the game, see how things are going to, you know, your anticipation, having, you know, uh, seeing a play before it uh, occurs, you know, um, and that's, uh, that's what we're looking for, those types of guys. Uh, the passing skills, we're running a passing game, um, passing screening, you really do need guys they're all going to be point guards that can make a play. They can. We're not that kind of offense. You just give it to the point guard and he just dribbles the ball around. Uh, so we do need those that, that aspect of the game, but being able to see the game. Yeah, you know. and, when, and, and when it's clicking, coach, it's 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 a joy because you got five guys out there, one brain, and, and they're all using their imagination. Fran, we see it all the time. John and I. Your, your offense is about as complex as any offense we see all year. Now you're starting a year with seven freshmen. I can't remember you ever having this many freshmen to start the season. How difficult has it been for them to, uh, to learn what you're trying to, to get through to them offensively? I don't know about them, but it's really <laughs> difficult for me to make hair because I'm, I'm tearing what hair I have uh, out right now. Uh, you know, when you have so many young guys, you know, and I talked to you guys before about it, you know, and usually in the upper classes, uh, we have teachers. We, in our junior and senior class, we only have four guys all together. So there are teachers, and we don't have enough mm -hmm, teachers right mm -hmm. now. There's more, there's more students than teachers. Uh, so it has been, uh, you know, it has been a process that's, uh, that takes some time. And I can say this, that the freshmen that I do have, uh, they have pretty good IQ. So they have picked it up in some cases better than or quicker than some of the other guys that we've had in the past. Uh, they're still not there yet. Uh, it's still going to be a learning curve, and I'm hoping as I've talked about that we'll get better at it by the time January rolls around and then by February rolling around. Grant, I notice uh, before we get to the two players you've gotten that the number is only two. Uh, can you talk a little bit about whether you're out there still searching or? Oh yeah, we're still going to be out there. You know, we still have one more that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's not the worst thing to wait uh, and just to get a sense of your own team as well, you know, of maybe what you need. Uh, because sometimes in the recruiting process, with the everything has really been amped up. It becomes much sooner than it used to be. So a lot of times you don't even know who your, how your team's going to respond, how they're going to develop, and it may give us an opportunity to just say, hey, maybe we didn't think we needed this position, but now, now we do need this position. Uh, Coach, you've done this for a long, long time, and I'm sure that uh, the way you play is the way you've always played, uh, all the way back to the parks uh, in the parks in Philly. Talk a little bit about the difference between recruiting for a system and then purely recruiting for talent. Well, you know, when you're recruiting for there, there's certain, uh, uh, you know, aspects of how we play that we know, of, even though somebody may be more talented, uh, whether it's athletically, sometimes they don't fit with the other people on our, on our, uh, and, and it's probably best for them that they don't come to this school because it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be going to take a lot of, um, they may not, never fit in to, to how we play. So it's important that we pick the right people. And as I say to any of the recruits, I said, you know, you'll have good choices. And obviously Lafayette's a really good choice. We're trying to figure out what's the right choice for you, what, where you're going to fit into the system that we run. And, and it'll be best for you and it'll certainly be best for us. Have you ever, uh, have you ever been tempted to compromise that 
because you see a kid out there. Who's oh yeah, and we <laughs> and we have sometimes you don't always have. It's not like the NFL draft where you're just taking people off the board, you know. <laughs> best available. Uh, <laughs> best available. Sometimes this is who we have to take because they're a Division One talent, so to speak, and then we have to make it work, yeah. you know. And that's and that's what we've done at, at times because even you may get somebody that's Division. Uh, or somebody that's good IQ, but they may not be athletically mm-hmm. as talented as you're going to need in Division One. So um, it's not going to it's not going to work. Yeah. So you got to have to mix and match sometimes. Well, two young men have fallen into the right choice category for Lafayette for the following year's class. We'll start with Dylan Hastings. He'll wear, he'll wear number 44 on the screen. He's out of Solanco High School in Quarryville, Pennsylvania, and he's a big kid. He's 6'9", 200 pounds. And uh, Fran, I was so impressed with his ability to shoot from beyond the arc. Yeah, he's he's very skilled, uh, Dylan. And uh, you know, I think you could say like a lot of our players that we've had, he's probably strength away from really being a uh, uh, you know a top-notch uh, Patriot League player. He can shoot it. He can play inside a little bit. Um, his coach uh, Scott Long does a good job with him. And also, one of his uh, AAU coaches was Doug Kraft, who coached with Scotty Koval mm-hmm. over. Uh, so he's had very good teaching. Um, but he's very skilled, as you can see. You can really tell, Coach, uh, one of the first things you look for, obviously you want to recruit shooters in your system. There you see him working around the basket a little bit, but when he catches the ball on the perimeter, his footwork is outstanding. I've, yeah. I've seen great shooters come in here. Now, great sh- shooters in high school, and they get here, it takes them two weeks to make a shot because it, you know they uh, can't get that shot off at this level, so uh, you've got to change everything from the bottom up. It exactly. doesn't look like Dylan needs a whole lot of work from the... No, no, and as you watch this on this, what I do like about this, and he can pass the ball. Mm, look at that. As, uh, so that fits. Now the, at our level, it's a lot, lot bigger and a lot quicker. So hopefully he can make those passes. Ooh, but, he well. saw, but he saw the game. He saw the game. He saw the game. Also, too, when you look at his resume, he's a young man that's uh, involved with Ophelia Day, which uh, deals with kids with special needs. So you yeah. talk about character. This young man has a lot of character. He is absolutely trem- He's a joy. He really is. Uh, and um, he's... He works in the community, and as you just said, mm-hmm. uh, feel your day. Uh, he's the uh, head cheerleader, I think. I don't think he, uh, for the football mm-hmm. program. Uh, he's, he just does so much. He has a lot of energy, uh, and I think the, the fans at Lafayette are going to love, love his, his enthusiasm. Brings back a, a name that we remember, Mike Farrell. You know, uh, it wasn't a, it, Mike was a, a terror on the court great center for us for many years part of a lot of good teams it wasn't unusual to see Mike Farrell uh, jumping on a, a you know a, a, a oh some yeah. sort of mattress or up wear, in the, yeah, wearing wear, a cape you wearing know, a cape and, and with yeah. The, yeah. the shirt and Lafayette a big L on his uh, so uh, Dylan may be like that and, and the other day uh, Dylan was telling me which is a real throwback uh, he said he, he went out the gym wasn't open so him and his friends went out and and uh, blew leaves off the court and played for three hours. I said, there you go. outdoors? That's I said, I, I haven't heard <laughs> anybody go outdoors. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you never played on the playground. Well, so uh, yeah. no, we all did. We yeah, never, right. oh, yeah. we, well, kids, we yeah. never got in a gym. But Remember nowadays, that. nobody yeah. goes in, they can't find a gym. I said, there's courts all over the place. Uh, well, I, you remember at your, at your camp, the elite yeah. camp, I asked the question, how many of you guys know what choose up means? Yeah. What's choose up? Well, anyway, yeah. it's a whole other, that's a whole other program. Well, let's <laughs> move on then to uh, number two. It is Alexander Petrie. Alex will wear number 21 on the video. Another guy with great range. You don't come here if you can't shoot the threes, I guess. He had 83 of them. He has set the school record for threes. And uh, I watched him break a few ankles, too, mm. in the crossover mm. dribble. Mm. Well, at the end of the day, you have to be able to put the ball in the basket. We'd like to be able to stop the other team from putting the ball in the basket <laughs> as well, but you, you do have to put it in the basket. Alex is a, is a big point guard. Uh, he's got an excellent range, as you can see. He can pass the ball. He can handle the basketball. And obviously, we're losing that little guy uh, this year, uh, you know, Nick Linder, I think his name is. <laughs> and uh, we think that uh, Alex can come in and, and help us right away. I had the chance to visit with him, Fran, spent some great time with him up in my office on campus. I was so impressed with not only him, but his mom, who joined us in the visit. And, you know, in watching these, uh, uh, the, these, this film on him, uh, he's so creative. He absolutely sees the game, uh, finds open people, makes the people around him better. The one thing I, I kind of lamented, uh, and I, I had to check the roster, is please let Nick please let Nick be a junior because the, the one thing that I think, now look, this kid's good enough on his own to come in here and, and, and help us right away. Having said that, we all know what Nick has meant to this team and what he's, 
what he's learned in his work ethic. How great would it be to have a kid like Alex study oh, under Nick for one year? It, it'd be tremendous. But I'll tell you what, this young man has a tre tremendous work ethic as well. I don't know. I don't know if you have anybody like Nick. I mean, I'm yeah. not sure whether we're <laughs> going to find another one of them. Because I asked Nick this year, I said, maybe we should put some of the freshmen with you. He said, I don't know if they're ready to go with me. <laughs> yeah, so he's probably right, right about that. Yeah. You know? yeah. well, I don't think there's any question about that. And Fran, this young man has a rather unique jump shot. It's, it's not the, the pure form, yeah, take it up, it's follow a, through. It's a very quick uh, release. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like mine. when I, it's exactly, <laughs> I said it the first oh, time I saw a video. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that, you, that's true. That's that's, good, maybe yeah. it is not like mine. Man. <laughs> I, I saw him, and I, could, I saw some of the old black and white footage, you know, the grainy stuff. Oh, they yeah, come on, stop. And I said, oh, my they gosh, look where he shoots, color, then. he shoots the ball like Rainbow. He yeah. shoots the ball like Rainbow Johnson. Yeah. But you know what? He has a low release. It's a little funny release, but I'll tell you what. When you can put it on the floor like he yeah. can, and he shoots with such range. And good and quickness, you know, and, yeah. and, he's, got, and he's a big guard, Yeah, you know. He's yeah. about 6'2", six 6'3". Six all right, Friday night, uh, Villanova. I don't know how you got your. I mean, there's one thing about <laughs> being loyal to your school, where you graduated from. But well, first you get of all, they this? they never told me they were going to win the national title <laughs> when, <laughs> they, yeah. when, when they when they asked. Did. I was hoping that Josh Hart would come out early, you know, and go to the pros. He said along, no. I'm, along with about six <laughs> others, you know, that's what the, that's what Jay said. There's about six or seven guys leaving early, you know, and I said, yeah. oh, okay, that's good. He I'll, meant practice. <laughs> So, you know, you know, they say, you know, instead of like working your way up to the top, just go and beat up the biggest guy that you can find. And then maybe the rest of the guys will leave you alone. <laughs> We're so, hoping, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that's Friday night. Then you'll take on St. Peter's on Monday. And then our first ball game on the Lafayette uh, Sports Network, where we will stream the NJIT game next uh, Thursday night. That is a 7 o'clock start. And we'll have you on Sunday afternoon again on the 20th as you take on Cornell right here, that will be a full Lafayette Sports Network broadcast. Yeah, it's uh, not an easy start. You know? mm -hmm. Certainly not easy on Friday, uh, but St. Peter's was very good this year. Uh, they have a winning record coming in with everybody returning. That's uh, going to be their opener. So NJIT's coming NJIT, up 20, 20 win yeah, season. Yeah, and they yeah. beat Michigan last year uh, You know, on the road and some other great programs. So we have a quite a quite a uh, challenge ahead of us uh, but right now let's not look past the first Villanova. game yeah. Villanova I, I don't I don't want you know, I don't want to say that uh, we look past this game you know <laughs> no, we will not either you will have an opportunity I believe to watch the Villanova game I think it will be uh, some sort of a national broadcast there you have it that this has been the Lafayette signing day special with head coach Fran O'Hanlon and of course head coach Teresa Grentz my thanks to John my thanks to you let's get ready for some basketball I'm Gary Laubach goodbye everybody